I was 14 and I had made up my mind to run away to the Kyoto area and stay there for the rest of my life. After all, I thought, no matter what a man puts his hand to, he'll always be able to eat. On the 28th day of the fifth month, I put on a pair of trousers over my kimono and set off. I didn't know a thing about the world, and as for money, I had only seven or eight gold rio I had stolen and tucked in the band I wrapped around my stomach. Asking directions along the way, I got as far as Shinagawa. I was lonely and frightened, but I pressed on and stayed the night at an inn in Fujisawa. The next morning, I woke up early and walked about aimlessly, wondering what to do. Two tradesmen caught up with me. Where are you heading, they asked. Nowhere in particular, I said. Maybe someplace near Kyoto. Come along with us. We're going that way, too. Taking heart, I went with them to Odawara. That night at the end, they said, Tomorrow we'll be passing through the barrier station at Hokone. Have you got a travel permit? I, I, I never heard of such a thing. That's okay. Give us 200 coppers and we'll get one for you. I did as they said and was led through the barrier station the next day. All along, I remained on my guard, but by the time we stopped at Hamasatsu for the night, I felt I could trust them since they'd taken such good care of me. Before going to sleep, I took off all my clothes. In the morning, when I woke up and looked by my pillow, I saw that everything was gone. During the night, they had stolen my kimono, my pair of swords, and the stomach pan containing my money. I was stunned. I asked the innkeeper if he had seen the two men. He said, Oh, they said they were going on ahead to be in time for the festival at the Tsushima Shrine in Owari, and that you were to catch up. Completely overcome, I burst into tears. The kind innkeeper tried to console me. You know what they were? Flies on sesame seeds. Thieves that pay, prey on travelers. And here I thought they were your companions from Edo. What a shame. Where will you go now? I'm not sure I was thinking of going somewhere near Kyoto. Yes, but what can you do with only an underrope to your name? The innkeeper was at a loss too. But then he disappeared for a minute and returned with a big ladle. Well, he said, you're not the only one from Ido who's been robbed on this road. Here, take this and go to the neighborhood of Hamasatsu Castle and the countryside beyond and see if you can't beg for a coin or two. I got up my courage and spent the whole day begging. By evening, I had received about a peck of rice and wheat and 120 or 130 copper pennies. The innkeeper was a good-hearted man and put me up for the night. The following day, he said, it might not be a bad idea if you first went to Issei Shrine and prayed for your well-being. I gave him half of the grain and 50 coppers as a token of my gratitude and headed for Issei. During the day, I begged for alms, and after dark, I sought shelter in pine groves, on riverbanks, and in roadside shrines. Swarms of mosquitoes prevented me from sleeping, and believe me, that was no fun. At Ayanasaka in Aisei, I became friends with another young beggar. He gave me some advice. Go to a priest named Ryu Daryu and tell him that you've taken time off from the green grocer Osakyo in Shinganagawa to pay respects at Issei. Explain your situation to him and ask him to put you up for a few days. He'll check his records and let you stay. I went straight to Ryu Daryu's residence and delivered a little speech to an attendant at the inner entrance. A man wearing a hakama came out. He had a ledger with him. After looking through it several times, he motioned me to step inside. I entered with a beating heart and sat down as told in a small waiting room. Before long, the man in the Hakama came back and told me to take a bath. It had been some time since I had last bathed. After my bath, the same man brought out an assortment of delicious-looking food. He said, I, I'm, I'm afraid it's rather simple. I hadn't eaten for several days, so I stuffed myself until I was ready to burst. By and by, the priest Ryodayu himself appeared. He was dressed in ceremonial robes. How admirable of you to come all the way from Edo to make this pilgrimage, he said. I will present you with an amulet tomorrow. I kept nodding. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. He brought out a set of quilts and a mosquito net and bid me good night. I slept in great comfort. The next morning, I ate another delicious meal and was given the amulet. It then occurred to me that I might as well try to borrow some money in case an emergency arose. I spoke to the attendant, and in a few minutes, the man in the Hakamam came out. What can I do for you, he asked. I told him how I had been robbed of everything and said, I wonder if I could have a loan of about two Rio for the road. 
He said he would talk to the priest and withdrew. He returned in a while and handing me a string of a thousand coppers. He said, as you may have noticed, there are many pilgrims staying here with the priest and he has little money to spare. This isn't very much, but please, please take it. I took the money and made a hasty exit. I visited shrines along the road and filled my belly with all sorts of good food. Very soon I was no better off than I'd been before, or they say the same old Makuami. The beggar who had told me about the priest was the son of a papermaker named Murata and came from Kuramarucho in the Kanda section of Edo. Heading back to Edo, I begged along the road and finally arrived empty-handed at Fushu in the province of Surugua. Just think, I wore only an underrobe with a rope for a sash and didn't, and didn't even have a pair of straw sandals. A fine figure of a beggar I must have been. At the post station in Fushu, there was a small shrine dedicated to Canon or some other deity. I crawled under the open porch and slept there every night. One night, I slept by a big pile of rocks just inside the entrance to a riding ground near Fushu Castle. The riding ground bordered on a bamboo grove, and beyond that stood a temple with a shogun's crest on its main gate. Early in the morning, I was awakened by 14 or 15 samurai who had come to practice riding. They galloped around with an air of fierce determination. I could tell right away that none of them was any good. As I got up, a couple of the stable boys spotted me and began shouting, Look, a beggar boy, the nerve of him sleeping here. What made you think you could come inside? I mumbled some excuses and stayed where I was, squatting on my heels, but the men were so hopelessly clumsy that I couldn't help laughing out loud. The stable boys were indignant. They sat on me with their fists and after knocking me down, dragged me out of the riding ground. I protested at the top of my voice, what's so wrong with telling people they're no good when they're really no good? A samurai who was about 40 came over. Hey, you beggar boy. How does a kid like you criticize samurai for the way they ride? Where are you from anyway? Come on, speak up. I am from Ido, and I'll have you know, I wasn't always a beggar. Do you like horses? Why, yes. Well, let's see you ride then. Clad only in my underrobe, I showed them a thing or two about riding. Everyone was impressed and said to one another, This wretch must be a son of a samurai. The samurai who had spoken to me earlier said, Come home with me, and I'll give you a meal. So after the practice ended, I followed him to his home. It was on a side street near the residence of the Fuchu town magistrate. We entered through a simple gate and went around to the kitchen door. He told me to wait and soon came out with a tray piled high with rice and soup. It was delicious. The samurai had his own meal in a room further inside. He came to the kitchen afterward and asked my name and who my parents were. When I put him off with some lies, he said, I really feel sorry for you. Stay with us. He gave me a kimono and had his wife arrange my hair and fill a bucket with hot water for me to wash up with. The two just couldn't do enough for me. In a while, the samurai went off somewhere very properly dressed in a kataguin and a hakahama. He came back late in the evening. Now that I think it over, I realize he was probably a senior policeman in service of the town magistrate. That night, he called me into the living room and questioned me once more about my background. I lied again. My, my, my family? They're, they're, they're tradesmen. In that case, why not live here? I'll see it to it that you get a pair of swords and Nagama right away. I stayed for six or seven days, and the entire time the samurai and his wife looked after me as though I were their own child. I had different plans, however. What good was it making do in a house like this when I could just as well go to Kyoto and become a retainer in some nobleman's house? One evening, I changed into my old underrobe, and after folding my kimono and obing neatly by the quilts, I slipped out the house. I spent the night in a roadside shrine on the other side of the Abe River, got up before sunrise, and ran as fast as I could towards Kyoto. With no money and no food, I was in an awful fix for three days. I begged a coin here and there and slept two nights in a Jizo shrine in Yutsusomaya. It was around eight on the second night that I was awakened by a crash somewhere in the vicinity of the shrine veranda. Thinking that another man might be out there, I cleared my throat. <clears throat> a voice called back, who's there? Pilgrim on the road to Issei. Good, I was planning to go on to the next post station to gamble. Carry my money for me and I'll give you something to donate to Issei. I got up and followed the band to a shed somewhere near the entrance to the post station of Mariko. Inside, 30 or so men were seated in a circle. One of them, he seemed to be the boss, looked at me and demanded, What's this dirty beggar doing in here? 
The man who had brought me said, The boy said he was on his way to Ise, so I decided to bring him along. Uh, All right, then. Here, have something to eat and wait around. I'll give you an offering for Ise later. The boss treated me to food and sake. After they had gambled for a while, the man I had come with handed me 300 copper pennies wrapped in a piece of paper. The other gamblers also gave me money. 50, 100, 24, 12, altogether 900 pennies. Now go back quickly to Jesus' shrine and sleep for the night, they said. I thanked them, and just as I was about to leave the shed, one of them called me over and gave me three big rice balls. Overjoyed, I ran all the way back to the shrine, made an offering to the Hizo, and went to sleep.